Thank you. Uh, Dave Pugh with the 5th Coast Guard District. Um, I'm going to just give you a real quick overview of what oil spill response looks, for, looks like from the whole government. Come on in. Grab one of those chairs. Um, talk a little bit about the National Contingency Plan. That's where we get a lot of our authorities and jurisdiction from and really talks about the responsibilities. The big takeaway that I want you to get from today is, is what I talk about the unified command. That's what we try to implement for every emergency response and every oil spill. We want this to be a whole community solution to an oil spill response. Um, we as the federal on-scene coordinator, we are the lead federal agency for spills in what we call the coastal zone, basically in the waters of the United States, uh, coastal areas, bays, rivers. Coast Guard is probably going to be the lead agency. Um, in the coastal area. In the inland zone, it's going to be the Environmental Protection Agency. So we are the lead agency, lead federal agency, but that means by, by no means that means that we're in there in it by ourselves. Talk a little bit about uh, the National Contingency Plan, where we get our authorities from, where we get the laws from. Clean Water Act is what makes it illegal to dump oil or, or hazardous materials into the water. But as feds, we always come up with federal regulations. And our guiding document, our principal guide document, is in, in 40 Code of Federal Regulations, Part 300, the National Contingency Plan. It is the nation's blueprint for how we respond to oil spills. That's primarily what I'm going to talk about today. So again, the responsibility, it delineates who the federal on-scene coordinators are, either the Coast Guard or the EPA, depending on where it is. It talks about the organization of the response structure. It gives us some guiding principles and priorities for response. And then it talks about the phases of conducting their response. Um, the National Contingency Plan really talks about the national level, the regional level, but really most importantly down at the state and local level. I'm going to show you a slide in a little bit that talks about some of those relationships. Most spills start at the small level, um, at a gas station, a car going into a ditch, a small household uh, type spill that's not going to have any type of state or federal response to it. It's going to be handled at the local level by the fire department or the, the, the police department. All spills are local, but we have this entire response structure that is on top of that to provide those local commanders the tools that they need to respond. So it designates the federal on scene coordinator. Um, you here all are from the from the Mid Atlantic region, as, as myself is. Um, I, I come from Portsmouth, Virginia, but we see the Mid Atlantic uh, coast from North Carolina all the way up to the Philadelphia area. So we have about six states that we're involved with. Um, what I really encourage your Sea Grant folks, if if you really want to get tuned in with those local commanders, we have basically here we have a sector, a Coast Guard sector for each state, um, pretty much up and down the Mid-Atlantic, uh, up in Delaware Bay, Philadelphia, they cover a couple of states, but we have one for North Carolina, we have one for Virginia, yes. So how does the, how does that, the FOSC fit with the, in the Delaware, which is where I'm from, mm -hmm. with uh, the co-op? Yeah, um, okay, the co-op, the, the Delaware River, uh, Delaware Bay, uh, DVRC, DVRC, DVRC. They are a cleanup cooperative. Mm -hmm. That is, they are an oil spill uh, organization mm -hmm. that industry sponsors, pays for, and has on hire to deal with a large spill from one of the responsible parties up there. So we work with them all the time in okay. the area committees and all that, and, and I'll, I'll show you that in um, a second. So time. you initiate something in that, that they will work on? Absolutely. Okay, so they don't they don't initiate anything on their own. No, I'll show you how that yeah. works okay. here. In just I mean, so be off, the Coast Guard is Do, doesn't, doesn't clean touch, it up. Doesn't touch the oil. Right. Yeah. I'll show I'll show you how that works in, in, okay. in a slide here. If we're gonna have a Q and A panel discussion at the very end, so sure. I'm gonna ask people to okay. questions. Okay. To what I try to do on this slide is kind of paint that picture that I talked about. That most cases here are at the local level car goes into a ditch, tanker overflows, something like that. Most cases are local, and the local fire chief and police department is going to handle that. But we have set up the whole national contingency plan to provide a, a top-to-bottom response for the whole of government. Up at the national level, we, so up here at the national level, we have the national response team. They also have a national contingency plan. That's, that's our 40 CFR. Really, I think mostly for C Grant's interest, I kind of drew this green dot in here where I kind of see C Grant possibly fitting in. We have a regional response team. 
regional response team can, can, uh, is the states, the primary federal agencies. We on the Coast Guard for the 5th Coast Guard District. We sit on that, our EPA counterparts. We come together twice a year for meetings, but most importantly, we're there to, to help facilitate if there's a large spill in our region, that mid-Atlantic area, um, we're going to come together with all the state partners, federal partners, and really help coordinate a safe and effective response. We have a regional contingency plan, and then getting a little bit in what you talked about, the area committee. That's where the rubber really meets the road. These are, an area committee is, uh, the national contingency plan requires an, an area contingency plan for each of those areas. Um, the Delaware Delaware Bay has an area contingency plan and they have an area committee. The Coast Guard sector commander co-chairs that, that committee. The uh, DVRC, the cleanup cooperative, they are on that committee. Mm -hmm. That's where they talk about what happens for a spill in Del Delaware Bay, Philadelphia area. So we have similar committees that are for the state of North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, and up in, up in Delaware Bay. So I really see if you want to get in touch with what's going on with your the folks in your near your office, find out who that area committee uh, points of contact are. We're happy to facilitate that as discussions. They meet quarterly. They have, they have area committee meetings and exercises all the time. They are welcome to the public. They would love to have Sea Grant folks attend those. Uh, usually we have 60, 70 people come to a good area committee meeting. We would love to have your participation in exercises. We're having a big exercise in September. It's going to involve two of our sectors, a big offshore scenario. Uh, we would be happy to have Sea Grant representatives attend those attend those uh, exercises and those committees. So getting plugged into your area committee, that's where you're going to make the connection. If we do. What we really try to stress is the unified command concept. I, I've talked about it a couple times, but I can't say that enough. Although the command, this unified command, the federal on scene coordinator is the lead for it, you see a couple of things in here. The responsible party, as per the Clean Water Act and the National Contingency Plan, it's the responsible parties, responsibility and duty to, to respond to an oil spill from their vessel or their ship or, or what have you. We help them along in the process, but they are on tap to do that. Big, big industries, your Chevrons, your Shells, all that kind of stuff, they are very good at this and very responsive to that. They have their own contractors mm -hmm. or co-ops set up. They are required to have certain equipment that can ma uh, that can meet their uh, worst case discharge available. So they have con subcontracted that to cleanup contractors. But really, we stress the unified command, and we kind of have this organizational system that we borrowed from the fire service. That's how we organize our command up here. But we're organized in, into uh, four key areas, logistics, finance, plans, that's really creating the plan of how we're going to attack the problem, how we're going to respond, and the operations are the folks doing there. We have these books, the incident management handbooks. This is uh, an incident command system compliant with the national response framework. It talks about, it has job aids for what you do if you're assigned to the planning and you're the situation unit leader, which um, is the person that does all the displays, tracks what's going on. There's checklists, there's job aids, really talks about who they're going to be, who they're going to be working with. I've, I've got about a dozen copies here. Please take one if you're interested in it. It's kind of it helps describe how we respond, and, and it's a good thing to have in your back pocket if you show up to a spell. Real quick, National Contingency Plan, again, it talks about those phases of the response. We discover it, we go out there and we assess what the situation is, and then we really, um, the, the main priority is this bottom one, is ensuring that there's a safe, efficient, and coordinated response. That is our, that is our uh, really what, what we're focused on, is making sure we're all working together on this problem to make sure that the oil spill gets cleaned up. The overall, uh, overall, priority is human life. That's always going to be the case. Sometimes we get in situations where we can't worry about too much and you know if a boat's sinking we're, we're going to get the people off before we're concerned about the oil or what's on board. But the second priority is stabilization. Making sure the problem doesn't get worse. Getting the tanker off the rocks, turning off valves, doing some emergency uh, containment. Um, but really we're focused on making sure that uh, we're all working together on a safe and coordinated response. So our duties as a federal on-scene coordinator, 
we're going to investigate that, but we're also going to oversee what the responsible party is doing. Like Franklin, we were saying earlier, we don't actually, we're not out there too much actually cleaning up the oil. That's going to be uh, contractors that are providing the majority of that work. The, the responsible party is responsible for making sure if they're doing that. We're making sure they're doing it safely and efficiently. Um, if we don't have a responsible party, or the responsible party is unable to come up with the right resources, we do have some special funds that we can access, and we can actually go and hire contractors to do the work. We, we, we do that on a regular basis, usually for smaller spills. Um, someone's in bankrupt, or they're in jail, and their boat sinks. We will, we will access these special funds. We will hire contractors, and they're going to get the bill later on, but, um, but we, we do, we're not going to wait until the responsible party does the right thing. Sometimes it's a hard, there's always a lot of questions about who caused it and all that kind of stuff. If we're sensing delays or frustrations with that, we will access these funds and get, and get the appropriate response role. Real quick, the Coast Guard uh, is one of our 11 primary missions. Everyone thinks of the Coast Guard search and rescue and, and um, uh, counter drug missions. Those are two of our main missions, but Marine Environmental Protection is one of our mandated missions. So um, we are the lead federal agency again for uh, spills in, in the in the coastal area, and, and through that is our, our federal on scene coordinator. They are pre-designated, and the terminology that we're using now is our sector commanders. The folks in Philadelphia, Norfolk, down in Wilmington, they are the pre-designated federal on scene coordinator. So those federal on scene coordinators do have help. Um, Frank, our scientific support coordinator, kind of a segue to him, myself as the DRAT. I, I help all our four sectors that are in our area uh, manage their mission. We do have Coast Guard strike teams. Our closest one is in Fort Dix, New Jersey. These are folks that are specially trained and have special equipment to deal with oil and hazardous material response. The real pros um, that really bring some expertise and some special equipment to help us out. And I don't mean to interrupt, but we do, Coast Guard does have a station in Elizabeth City. And although they're not a strike team, they do, in the, in the past, they have provided resources uh, yep. in spoke response. Yeah, we, we, we do have Coast Guard units throughout the AOR. You probably see them um, primarily our search and rescue stations. They really don't understand this environmental response mission too well. That's probably going to come from their sector headquarters in the big cities that I mentioned. Um, really, to characterize the Mid-Atlantic, you know, really our major industry area is really up in Delaware Bay. The refineries, if you ever drive out through Philadelphia, it looks, looks like you're in Houston or something like that. It's, it's a lot of refineries. Uh, Philadelphia area, the Delaware River area is the largest um, refining on the East Coast by far. Um, I think it's about a third of the national um, petroleum goes through Philadelphia. It's a, that's a, a shocking number to a lot of people but it is a huge petroleum port. So I think a lot of our focus is up there, but we do have threats throughout the area. We are kind of characterized by some of the other areas, perhaps are a lower threat, but places like the Chesapeake Bay and the rivers that we have are very, so maybe they're lower threat. We don't have a lot of oil traveling, you know, up the Potomac River or some, some of these other areas, but the areas are so sensitive that we, if we did have this spill, it'd be uh, really difficult and and so we, we do have our plans, we do have some other things that address some of those, um, prioritizing sensitive areas, but I'm going to turn it over to Frank to take us through a little bit more about the science of uh, spill response. Okay. Thanks. 